Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD is a 1966 British science fiction film directed by Gordon Fleming and written by Milton Subotsky, and the second of two films based on the British science fiction television series Doctor Who. It stars Peter Cushing in a return to the role of the eccentric inventor and time traveller Doctor Who, Roberta Tovey as Susan, Jill Curzon as Louise and Bernard Cribbins as Tom Campbell. It is the sequel to Doctor Who and the Daleks 1965. The story is based on the Doctor Who television serial The Dalek Invasion of Earth 1964, produced by the BBC. The film was not intended to form part of the ongoing storylines of the television series. Elements from the program are used, however, such as various characters, the Daleks and a police box time machine, albeit in re-imagined forms. Topic. Plot Policeman Tom Campbell comes upon several men burgling a jewelry shop. Running to what appears to be a police box to call for backup, he enters TARDIS, a time and space machine operated by its inventor Doctor Who, together with his niece Louise and granddaughter Susan, as they are about to depart for the future. Arriving in London in the year 2150, they find a desolate landscape of ruined buildings. It transpires that the Daleks, who Doctor Who and Susan encountered in Doctor Who and the Daleks, have invaded Earth and ravaged the planet. Some of the survivors have formed a resistance movement, while those captured have either been turned into brainwashed slaves called Robomen, or taken to provide forced labor at a Dalek mining complex in Bedfordshire. Doctor Who and Tom become separated from Louise and Susan, are captured by a squad of Robomen and imprisoned on a Dalek spaceship. Doctor Who manages to release the cell's lock, unaware that the Daleks use escape attempts to test their captive's suitability for robotization. Meanwhile, a man called Wyler takes Louise and Susan to a resistance base in a London underground station, where they meet other rebels including David and the wheelchair-bound Dortmund. Dortmund suggests disguising some rebels as Robomen to get onto the Dalek spaceship and using bombs to attack it from inside. On the spaceship, Doctor Who and Tom are recaptured and taken to be robotized when the rebels, including David, Wyler and Louise, attack it. During the battle, Doctor Who and Tom free themselves. Doctor Who escapes with David, while Tom and Louise become trapped on the spaceship. After the attack fails, Wyler returns to the base where Dortmund and Susan are waiting and tells them that he saw Doctor Who escape. They decide to go to the outskirts of London and hide there until the rebels can regroup. Susan leaves a written message about their intentions for Doctor Who, then they depart and commandeer a van. Dortmund is killed when they encounter a Dalek patrol, however, and Wyler and Susan are forced to abandon the vehicle just before it is destroyed. After escaping from the spaceship, Doctor Who and David evade the Daleks and return to the now deserted underground station. Failing to see the message left for them, they assume that Wyler, Dortmund and Susan have gone to Bedfordshire to investigate the mining operation and decide to follow them. Hiding on the Dalek spaceship, which has taken off bound for the Bedford mine, Tom and Louise are reunited. When the craft lands they exit it through a waste chute. Finding themselves in the mining complex, they are attacked by a robberman but saved by one of the slave workers, who hides the couple in a tool shed. Wyler and Susan shelter in a cottage, occupied by a woman and her mother. Susan convinces Wyler that Doctor Who would avoid the Daleks they have seen in the Watford area, head for the Bedfordshire mine instead, and that they must go there too. The daughter then leaves on an errand, but returns with Daleks who capture Wyler and Susan and take them to their mine control center. Near the mine Doctor Who and David are confronted by Broccoli, a black marketeer, who agrees to smuggle them into the complex. By chance, he leads them to the tool shed where Tom and Louise are hiding. Reunited, they are joined by a prisoner, Conway. He reveals that the Daleks are about to drop a bomb into their mineshaft to destroy the Earth's core. This will then be replaced with a device enabling the aliens to pilot the planet like a giant spacecraft. Plans of the mine show an old shaft leading to a convergence between the planet's magnetic poles. Realizing that an explosion at this point would release enough energy to draw the metallic Daleks into the Earth's core, Doctor Who asks Tom and Conway to attempt to deflect the bomb. 
Broccoli also leaves, declining to get involved, and Doctor Who sends Louise and David to help get the prisoners away from the mine. Broccoli then betrays Doctor Who, leading a group of Daleks to him. As Doctor Who is led away the Daleks open fire on Broccoli, killing him. As Tom and Conway work in the mineshaft to alter the bomb's trajectory, they are discovered by a robberman. During the ensuing fight Conway and the robberman fall to their deaths. Tom uses timbers boarding up the old shaft entrance to create a deflecting ramp, then rushes back the surface. Doctor Who is taken to the mine control room and meets Wyler and Susan. He seizes the radio link to the Robomen and orders them to turn against their masters. As the Robomen fight the Daleks, Doctor Who escapes with Wyler and Susan while the slave workers flee from the mine. The Daleks quickly defeat the rebellion and release their bomb into the shaft, but the device is deflected and detonates at the pole convergence. The Daleks are pulled into the Earth's core and destroyed while their spaceship, having just taken off, is brought crashing down onto the mine and explodes. Later, as the travelers prepare to return to the present in TARDIS, Tom asks to be taken back to a few minutes before the burglary occurred. Upon arrival he knocks out the thieves and then drives them away in their getaway car, heading for the police station and an anticipated promotion. Cast <laughs> 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 Production Amicus bought an option to make three Dalek-related stories from Terry Nation and the BBC for £500 Principal photography commenced at Shepperton Studios, England, on 31 January 1966, and was completed on of March, 11 days behind schedule. Production was complicated by the illness of Cushing, which required some rewriting of the script to reduce his on-screen appearances. There were a number of accidents on set. A Dalek prop caught fire during the filming of Rebels storming the Dalek spaceship. Stuntman Eddie Powell broke his ankle during a scene in which his character is killed by the Daleks while trying to escape from them. Actor Andrew Keir hurt his wrist when punching through a van windscreen during a sequence in which his character, Wyler, and Susan escape from London. The film's budget of £286,000 was nearly 60% larger than its predecessor. In 1995, a documentary about the two Dalek films, Dalek Mania, was released on video. It revealed details about the productions, spin offs, and publicity campaigns. It was later included as an extra in many of the home media video releases of the two Dalek films. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Dalek props. The design and color scheme for the majority of the Dalek props was very similar to that used for the television versions at the time, having large black bases and predominantly silver paintwork with gray shoulders, natural aluminum collars and slats and blue hemispheres. Three Dalek leaders are also shown. A gold Dalek appears to be in overall command of the invasion force, a black Dalek controls the Bedfordshire mining operation and bomb detonation, and a red Dalek is in charge of the Dalek spaceship and operations to capture human slaves, robotize prisoners and wipe out any resistance. As with the first film, the props were fitted with larger dome light than their TV counterparts, and some were equipped with a mechanical claw in place of the standard plunger. Tie-in products and later coverage The breakfast cereal Sugar Puffs sponsored the film and, in an example of product placement, Sugar Puffs signs and products can be seen at various points in the film. In exchange for its funding, the company was also allowed to run a competition on its cereal packets to win a Dalek film prop, and feature the Daleks in its television advertisements. From 1965 to 1967, the TV Century 21 comic featured a one-page Dalek comic strip. From January 1966 onward artists Eric Eden and Ron Turner depicted the Daleks using elements from the film design, including mechanical claws and large bases and dome lights. 
During the run of the strip, the comic also often featured photographs from, and articles about, the films. In January 1984, an article about the two Dalek films appeared in Doctor Who Monthly containing production information, photographs and interviews. Another article about the films appeared in the 1995 Spring Special Edition of Doctor Who magazine. Release The film premiered in London on the 22nd of July 1966. Topic: Marketing. The film had a 286,000 pounds budget, of which over 50,000 pounds was spent on promotion. The original trailer for the film describes actor Ray Brooks as the boy with the knack. Brooks had recently starred in the popular, Palm Door winning 1965 Richard Lester comedy The Knack, Dot and How to Get It. Critical response The film was given a negative review in The Times newspaper on 21 July 1966. The second cinematic excursion of the Daleks shows little advance on the first. The filming of all this is technically elementary and the cast, headed by the long-suffering, much ill-used Peter Cushing, seem able, unsurprisingly, to drum up no conviction whatever in anything they are called to do. Grown-ups may enjoy it, but most children have more sense." Radio Times gave the film three stars out of five in a retrospective review, stating, Independence Day it's not, but director Gordon Fleming keeps the colorful action moving swiftly along to cheap and cheerful effect. Youngsters will love it, while adults will want to EXTERMINATE Bernard Cribbins, who provides comic relief as the bumbling Bobby. Yet, through all the mindless mayhem roll the ever-impressive Daleks, truly one of science fiction's greatest alien creations. In a review of the 2013 Blu-ray release Starburst magazine's Paul Mount said the feature was, "...a leaner, slicker film than its predecessor, its bigger scale and lavish location filming giving the story room to breathe and allowing for some effective action sequences, such as the rebel attack on the impressive Dalek flying saucer." A third Dalek film, to be based on the serial The Chase, was planned but never produced because of this film's underperformance at the box office. Topic: Radio adaptation. The film's soundtrack was adapted and presented by Gordon Gow for radio broadcast on the BBC Light program on the 18th of November 1966 as show 305 of the Movie Time series. It was produced by Tony Luke. Equals equals home media.